Chapter 8 Parts of the Presentation by Jim Stovall If you surveyed any cross-section of people in the world and asked them the most fearful environment or situation they can imagine, a high percentage of people would respond with an answer involving standing on stage to give a speech or make a presentation. While, as a professional speaker myself, I would have to acknowledge this fear. It's important to realize we can minimize the discomfort and intimidation if we will simply address every part of the presentation and create our own home court advantage. A home court advantage in sports or in the world of presenting involves making the unknown, frightening situation as familiar and comfortable as possible. I've been an entrepreneur for over 25 years, involved in running a number of ventures and business operations. In our litigious business environment here in the 21st century, I am pleased to be able to say I have never sued anyone or been sued by anyone. However, I have had to testify as an expert witness in several trials. Before I went to testify in federal court for the first time, I was talking with my own corporate attorney. I shared with him that I was a bit nervous about having to appear in court as an expert witness. As he is now an octogenarian having practiced law for over half a century, he is generally full of advice regarding everything in and around the courtroom. He suggested that I go to the courtroom where I would be testifying to experience the atmosphere while another trial was going on. Then he also recommended that I arrive in court early the day of my testimony in order to walk around the courtroom and sit in the witness box before anyone else arrived. I heeded my lawyer's advice and had a much more relaxed and comfortable experience testifying than I otherwise would have had. I recommend that all speakers and presenters do their own prep work and walkthrough before the presentation. As a blind person myself, I always travel to the venue for my speeches with one of my assistants. For each arena event or corporate speech, we make arrangements to arrive at a time when we can do a walkthrough on stage before the scheduled time for my speech. This gives me the chance to count my steps, visualize any barriers or obstacles, and generally get the feeling of the sight before my audience arrives. Although this is a necessity for me as a blind person, it can become a valuable asset for any presenter. It is a valuable exercise to not only familiarize yourself with the venue from the stage or podium perspective, but to also get the feeling of the venue from the perspective of several points in the audience. All arenas, convention centers, and outdoor venues are different. They each have their own feel, sound, and atmosphere. Never take any of it for granted. Also familiarize yourself with backstage accommodations and take the opportunity to meet as many of the event staff and crew as possible. Always check and double-check the microphone. Find out if they have a backup and how you would make the switch in the event of a microphone failure. Determine whether you prefer a podium microphone, a lavalier mic, or a handheld. There are advantages and disadvantages to each. Podium microphones are fixed in one spot and are generally the most stable and reliable. Lavalier mics that attach to your clothing or are worn over your ear with an unobtrusive extension near your mouth offers great freedom and flexibility, but can develop static or interference as they utilize wireless technology. I prefer a handheld microphone as a general rule, whether it has a cord or is cordless. A handheld mic offers most of the stability and reliability of a podium mic but a lot of the freedom of a lavalier setup. If you are prone to allergies or are suffering from a cold or sore throat, a handheld mic also gives you the ability to move the mic away from you if you cough or sneeze. This can be a challenge if you're wearing a lavalier microphone. During your walkthrough, verify how the microphone sounds throughout the venue and determine the best distance to have between you and the microphone. Always check where the mic will be when you walk on stage and confirm that it will be turned on before you are introduced or as you are walking to the podium. Determine whether your presentation is going to be video or audio recorded 
and what the parameters are for the use of that recording. Check whether the house mic will be the audio for the recording or whether there will be an auxiliary microphone. Check with the crew on the lighting that will be used during your presentation and be sure to stay in the lighted area as you can disappear from view very quickly if you veer out of the lit portion of the platform. If you are being video recorded or projected via iMag equipment, be sure to know how far from center stage you can move without adversely impacting the video. If you are using a podium, determine whether the sound will resonate in the microphone if you touch or bump the podium. Many podiums have wheels or casters that make it easy to move them on and off stage. Be sure the wheels or casters are locked down before your presentation or you may find yourself chasing after your podium. If your presentation calls for slides or video images, double and triple check all equipment well in advance of your presentation. Spare slides, cords, and light bulbs are all recommended. It may be next week, next month, or next year, but sooner or later, you will be very thankful for the backup equipment. If you are able to control the temperature of the room where you are presenting, always make it slightly cooler than you would otherwise have it before your audience arrives. If it's too warm before your crowd enters the room, they will collectively warm it up far beyond where most venues have the ability to cool it off during the time of your presentation. Try to know what other competing events or distracting activities may be going on at the site of your presentation. You will want to try to control interruptions or distractions as much as possible. However, life dictates that we can't control everything. My late great friend and mentor, Coach John Wooden, often said, things turn out best for those who make the best out of the way things turn out. I have had every imaginable distraction and interruption during my years on stage. I remember speaking to an investment banking convention at an amphitheater in Memphis when right in the middle of the speech, the lights went out. You may ask how I, as a blind person, even knew the lights went out. It's because, as I was standing on the stage, I heard one of the backstage crew members say into his walkie-talkie, we just lost all the lights in the house. My first goal was to avoid panic and potential injuries among the thousands of people in my audience. My second was to save my presentation and keep my message on track. Humor is always your friend in those situations. It is impossible for an audience to panic while they are laughing. Standing on the stage in a darkened amphitheater filled with investment bankers, I paused for a couple of seconds and then calmly said, Welcome to my world. Your meeting planner and corporate team thought of every possible detail and wanted you to experience this meeting from my perspective for a little while. The audience laughed, and I continued as if nothing had happened. It was only a few minutes, even though it seemed like hours, before the lights came back on, and I finished the presentation without a hitch. It's not a matter of if something will go wrong, it's a matter of when something will go wrong, and you've got to make it work. The message and the mission are too important to allow your presentation to be ruined by a technical challenge. People often ask me what meeting planners, event promoters, and speakers bureaus are looking for when they hire a high-priced professional speaker. It would surprise most people to learn that one of the most critical things they're looking for is someone who can finish right on time. It's important to be flexible with respect to how long your presentation will run. When I'm asked to speak, they will invariably tell my staff how long they want me to talk. But I always disregard whatever they say and ask them what time they would like me to finish. If there has ever been a meeting, convention, or arena event that ran on time, it certainly wasn't one that I attended. I am invariably getting on stage either a little before or considerably after the schedule called for me to make my presentation. A presenter becomes very valuable if they can instantly adjust their material to get the whole event back on schedule. Over the years, 
I have developed approximately three hours of material that I can use in a speech. I visualize my material in my mind like a train. I can add or subtract railroad cars from my train before my speech or even when I am presenting in order to fit whatever time parameters are required. If you want to get the reputation of a top-flight professional speaker or presenter, learn how to always conclude your presentation at the right time. Nothing will get your presentation off to a good start more than a great introduction. And nothing will have you struggling to dig yourself out of a difficult presentation hole more than a bad introduction. I take no chances on the content or quality of my introduction when I go to make a speech. My team and I have crafted what we feel is the optimal introduction for me through trial and error over the years. This is the actual introduction that we currently send to meeting planners, promoters, and Masters of Ceremonies, before I speak. The Jim Stovall Introduction In spite of blindness, Jim Stovall has been a national Olympic weightlifting champion, a successful investment broker, the president of the Emmy Award-winning Narrative Television Network, and a highly sought-after author and platform speaker. He is the author of 30 books, including the bestseller, The Ultimate Gift, which is now a major motion picture from 20th Century Fox, starring James Garner and Abigail Breslin. Three of his other novels have also been made into movies, with two more in production. Steve Forbes, president and CEO of Forbes magazine, says, Jim Stovall is one of the most extraordinary men of our era. For his work in making television accessible to our nation's 13 million blind and visually impaired people, the President's Committee on Equal Opportunity selected Jim Stovall as the Entrepreneur of the Year. Jim Stovall has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, Forbes Magazine, USA Today, and has been seen on Good Morning America, CNN, and CBS Evening News. He was also chosen as the International Humanitarian of the Year, joining Jimmy Carter, Nancy Reagan, and Mother Teresa as recipients of this honor. Prior to every presentation, always send your current introduction to everyone involved with an event. Don't take any chances. Carry several extra copies with you to the venue. Find out who will be introducing you, and be sure to offer them one of your extra copies of the introduction immediately before your presentation. Remember, event planners and masters of ceremonies have a million things on their minds and your introduction sheet may not be at the top of their list. Whether your introduction is lost, stolen, misplaced, or eaten like non-existent homework by the proverbial dog, have a copy of your introduction handy at the critical moment. Strongly request or politely demand that whomever is introducing you read the entire prepared introduction before your presentation. If they have extra remarks or comments they want to make about you or your presentation, ask them to do it before they read the prepared sheet. After you've done everything possible to get a great introduction, be prepared for it all to go wrong, as you may be walking onto the stage cold. This has happened to me, and my contingency is to thank my audience, then say, 25 years ago, when I woke up and discovered I had lost the remainder of my sight, I began living my life as a blind person, which involved moving into a little 9 by 12 foot room in the back of my house. If you had told me then everything that would happen to me, including, and then I insert a version of my own introduction into my speech at this point. The most important elements of a great presentation are, one, who said it, two, how well did they say it, and three, what did they say? In order to maximize our message, the only tool we have to tell our audience who we are is our introduction. As stated in an earlier chapter, you should contrast and punctuate emotion with humor throughout your presentation. You want it to be emotional without totally draining your audience, and you want it to be humorous, but not to the point of becoming trivial. You must know your audience. Days or weeks before your presentation, a good meeting planner or event coordinator 
can give you a profile or overview of who will be in your audience. Find out what is going on at their event and throughout their organization. Be sure to know who is on before you so you can calibrate your presentation. I have followed Jay Leno on stage. It is a different atmosphere than following other presenters I have worked with, such as Zig Ziglar, Tony Robbins, Christopher Reeve, Colin Powell, or Barbara Bush. Understand how long your audience has been seated during the session you are presenting. The mind can only absorb what the rear end can endure. I recommend that you always keep your language, demeanor, and content G or PG rated. I have never heard a presenter criticized for not using profanity, vulgarity, or off-color stories. As I have previously mentioned, I have approximately three hours of material that I can mix and match on stage to create my presentation, but the opening three minutes of my speech are always 100% memorized, canned, and rehearsed. There's already enough anxiety when you start a presentation without having to struggle for your opening lines. If you will have the opening of your presentation set in concrete, it will give you a few moments to settle down, relax, and get ready to deliver an impactful presentation. I believe the most important part of any presentation is the call to action near the end of your time with your audience. This is when you can deliver the transformational so what message that gives them their marching orders. It's important for your audience to realize that knowing something without doing something creates no results. I always tell my audiences, you can change your life when you change your mind. My speech will change their minds, but they have to take action to change their lives. I am unusual among speakers, authors, and presenters in that I offer my audience and my readers, including you, as a result of reading or listening to this book, a way to stay in touch with me, jim at jimstovall.com. I have 10 million books in print, and I have spoken to millions of people at live events, and I give everyone, including you, an ongoing connection to me. I am not only committed to making powerful presentations, but I am also committed to being a part of the change that my audience and my readers are seeking. Knowing something must always be followed by doing something. This is why our presentations must be both informational and motivational. Many people have information without action. They don't fail because they don't know what to do. They fail because they don't do what they know. Commit to being a person of change in your own life and through your presentations, commit to offering positive change to the world.